For cheap, safe, and reliable coin service, head on over to FeebleCoinZone.com and make sure to use Dirty at checkout. Get you that good extra discount. And wait, do you need games? Do you need codes? G2A has the total hookup dirty. We'll also get you that extra discount. What's happening, my beautiful people? And welcome to a video I believe you guys have been waiting for. Top 10 ways to win more games in FIFA. And I'm looking at straight W. If you've played a lot of FIFA, then you know it's all about consistency and being able to produce good results even when you're not playing your best is part of building that consistency and that's what this video is designed at trying to focus on different ways that you can get yourself additional possession, more attacks, less defensive errors, the all the above. If you'd like to see me bring back another video along the same lines, drop a thumbs up. If we can get a thousand likes, that tells me BAM! did something good Mike you need to drop another video for everybody and you guys voted on Twitter at Dirty Mike USA that you wanted me to do a top 10 not a top 5 you would wait if you're not following me there you probably should get on that if I've missed any factors scenarios or an area of expertise that needs to be talked about in FIFA to help you win more drop it in the comments down below I always reply and get back to as many people as possible in the comments on every single video I got you guys I'm saluting the support I got you I have a bunch of clips I'm gonna intertwine with this top 10 and something that I really, truly need you guys help. So I've been looking to kind of rebrand and get rid of the dirty portion of my name. And this has been something that's been weighing on my mind for the last few months uh, because I've had companies come to me directly and say, hey, you know, we appreciate what you're doing. We, we appreciate you as a person, but it's tough to use you. Everything that's happened on my channel has always been due to the subscribers and the feedback and, and producing the right content for what people want to see and the support. So this is no different. I'm just giving you what's been on my mind. I've been thinking about it and I need your help. Let me know, should I keep Dirty Mike? Is that just what needs to be the, the bee's knees? But you see where I'm coming from, where I hate missing out on maybe cool opportunities that can put me in front of the right people to progress the channel or to progress my brand or my image due to a name issue or conflict. Uh, at the same time, I don't want to have anything that's selling out or, oh, you went against where you started or, no. I mean, you're trying to advance. You're trying to show innovation. You're trying to show progression. But at the same time, you don't want to lose yourself while you're doing that. Nobody wants to start at this personality, right, here, and then shift to this entirely different person. Who is this Right? I just want to know what you guys think. And if you drop a comment and I use that name, I actually rebrand it, I will give you 12,000 FIFA points. So that should be some great motivation. That'll get you a lot of packs. Team of the season is this week. I was thinking of names like Dr. Mike, D Mike, and things along those lines, but nothing to me has stuck as that's better than what you currently have. Anyways, moving forward. Number one, and these are not in any sort of order, but we're talking about throw ins. When you're attacking, don't rush your throw ins. And I see this happen whether I'm in Division One, I'm in the top placement in a draft, I'm in the finale. They've beaten down that pass button and they throw it in quick. And it leads to errors, loss of possession. You gifted it to your opponent. Why would you want to do that? And on the defensive side, okay, if you're defending throw-ins, make your opponent go backwards. You're forcing him to make additional passes in his build-up play, which has a higher percentage of mistakes being made. Don't let him go forward. Don't let him get an easy down-the-wing throw-in. Make him go backwards. It gives your defenders a better chance of an interception or even your midfielders a better chance of a chase back, a mistake, a foul. Something else could happen. And I'm all about playing the percentages, especially when you're going for wins. This is a game of poker sometimes with FIFA and field position. If you watch American football, you understand a little bit more with field position. The odds or the percentages of good or bad things happening, it matters where you are on the field or where you are on the pitch. Make them go backwards. I'm not sure I'm gonna make a lot of friends with this next point, but it is definitely relevant to FIFA 16 where you're looking at veteran fouls. It's where you wrap up somebody. You make sure that they are unable to continue the attack. They're not gonna get an and one uh, in basketball. And the same applies to FIFA this year. If you're not able to catch the rhythm, your opponent's starting his counter attack, you can wipe him out with a slide tackle or a veteran foul. And as long as you didn't go in straight from behind, you're not gonna get a red card. You're gonna get a yellow at worst, and it's a good trade, because they have to restart, and then you can catch back up to the gameplay, the ping pong passing, the tiki taka. Because when you're out of rhythm, that's when you're conceding goals. Guaranteed, when you've lost the rhythm, or you're feeling the momentum shift, sometimes you need a breaker. And that's where having a better and foul, making your opponent restart, 
like I said, you're not going to make a lot of friends. I'm not saying to use and abuse this all match. Don't start slide tackling everywhere. That is not what Dirty Mike is co-signing, okay? Do not do that. But every once in a while, if you've got to catch the flow, you've lost it, you're wrapping off beat, you got to do something about that. The majority of defensive tutorials have talked about this aspect of FIFA, and it's applied almost every year. It's chasing back, using the midfielders to help you with defending, cutting those passing lanes. Basically, you don't want to maneuver with your back four to the point where they're out of position. That's not going to be a good look for your defensive shape. It's not going to be a good look for predictability. So what I'm presenting is making sure that you chase back with your midfield, with your wingers, even your strikers, if they're in a circumstance where they can help. This is all about increasing your odds of an interception, increasing your odds of a tackle. And in any defensive tutorial you've seen online, whether it's one of my tips and tutorials, it's OVs, it's crossies, someone who's a credible figure, I can 100% guarantee they have spoke about chasing back with the midfield, with the wingers, with the strikers, even if it's one of those weird circumstances, maybe it was a corner kick or a set piece and your striker is around the box. Use them! Use them! Help David Luis out. Help Sergio Ramos out. Help Thiago Silva out. This could be my largest issue out of the 10. Something that I make a mistake with quite frequently and it does cost you from time to time. I don't clear the ball enough. If you're feeling the heat, especially at the end of a match when your opponent might be all out attack, ultra attacking, and this is why people concede goals in the 90th minute. I see in the comments, I see on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, they're scripting in FIFA and I don't think that's true. I just believe that people play differently depending the, the match score and the time of the game, right? If I'm losing, Guess what? I'm going more attacking. I don't want to settle for a loss. That's silly. Who plays to lose a game? So of course, when I'm in the 80th minute, the 85th minute, the 90th, I'm throwing more bodies forward. And you got to clear the ball from time to time. You're not going to make a bunch of fans. It's not the best gameplay. But when I have tried to pass out of the bat, I'm giving my opponent uh, gifts for Christmas, a Thanksgiving dinner on the platter, Happy New Year's, because they don't have to do anything. All they did is throw bodies forward and you gave them you know, a salute. You were like, I got you, man. You deserve this draw. Midway point. And if you watch a lot of high level FIFA, if you're watching the competitive scene, they use their goalkeepers. In Division One. they use their goalkeepers. It's like having another outfield player. And it gives you a little bit more time on the ball. If you know you're someone that's extremely nervous, maybe this isn't the best thing to start implementing in your gameplay, but it's something to take note of. And another reason I say this is because if you're in a 50-50, you're defending, there's a chip through ball coming in, even a through ball on the ground. That guy's chasing on you. You got Gareth Bailey pulling your shirt. You got Ronaldo, he's pulling your shirt. You're gonna lose some of those 50-50s, but you can increase the percentage of winning if you play the way you're facing, back to the goalkeeper. And then you can combine that with the radar from the goalkeeper position. He can find outlets. He's gonna have more time on the ball. And if you're a loosey-goosey and you don't know what the hell you're doing with the goalkeeper and you're feeling the, the rush, you're feeling the pressure, just kick it deep. As I said, you could clear the ball. Don't make a habit of this, but at least you didn't concede a goal. Hey, I kind of gave you a teaser there, but next we're looking at the radar. And this is something that can take a Division 5 player all the way into Division 1. That big of a difference. Being able to switch the pitch or understanding your formation and your tactics and what's open and what's not open. All you got to do is glance at that radar. Have you ever had a lot of your goal kicks ticked off, right? Or your set pieces, they didn't connect how you kind of wish they would. Especially on corners where people are passing to the top of the box. They're looking at the radar. And I don't know anyone who considers themselves a good FIFA player that does not use the radar. I just don't. You should be able to understand and if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. And if you're wide open, you're wide open. Just trying to increase y'all's possession. That's it. Simple in my mind, but I'm also a FIFA nerd. When you're looking at preferences and players and understanding instinctively what this means, I'm looking at which players have four star skill moves, five star skill moves, four star weak foot, five star weak foot. This is very relevant. And I think I have an example of me defending and I'm defending against an inform Iguain. But the fact that he has Iguain, my opponent, I know that he can't do the Berber spin. He can't do the advanced spin. I know these things off instinct. And that's where understanding preferences is so important and what players are capable of this and what players are just not capable. Not everyone can do a finesse shot and especially not with their weak foot. There's a certain type of player that is capable of doing that with a high level of consistency. And if they're not one of those guys, so you have a CDM that got forward, don't use the finesse shot. Power it home and try to get it on a strong foot. I know this sounds simple. These are all relevant factors, especially with some of the passing and even some of the first touches. Some players, 
If it hits their strong foot, it seems like they have a much better touch than if it's on that weak foot. It costs you an opportunity, and that's why you need to know preferences. Every player on your squad, what they can do and what they can't do. Because you're playing with them a lot. It, it seems obvious, but trust. It's worth noting down, get, you, get on the stats on Foothead, check the in-game stats, whatever you need to do, and start making these mental notes. And we're looking at sideline protection. Uh, and this is an area of the pitch that you just need to make sure that you keep your opponent guessing. Use the sideline, ball roll, drag back, run it a little bit. But more importantly, you're incorporating the addition of variety. You need to sometimes show your opponent that you're not scared to whip in across or run the sideline a little bit, throw out a couple different skill move combinations. And I'm not telling you to kill off the game. This is not the end of the match, hold the ball down the side. That is not what I'm promoting. It's just making sure that you're keeping them honest. The best defense is a great offense. So if you have the ball, you've got a lot of possession numbers, then your opponent's not getting that many attacks. Plain and simple. And I bring that up to say, going short on free kicks, not necessarily right by the goal. It could be at the midway line. It could be on your defensive side. It's a free pass. You call the man over, right? You go short and then you start your attack again. And if you're a comfortable passer, this makes so much sense. Why kick it deep? and possibly end up in a 50-50 header situation. Even someone like Ibra loses headers from time to time. Or that second ball after he won the aerial pursuit, it didn't end up bouncing to you. Why give away possession if it didn't even equal an opportunity to score a goal off that deep kick or lobbing it in from a free kick or a set piece? Just go short. A golden rule in FIFA is don't hand your opponent possession unless he earned it. He has to do something. The final point that I'd like to discuss, and this is a very broad uh, area of FIFA, how you interpret it up to you, but we're looking at controlling the game, controlling the rhythm, the speed, being able to quickly counter, and then on another attack, being able to slow the game down and make sure that you're connecting those passes, not rushing. These all kind of go into one category. I, I call it controlling the game. If the game is moving at the pace that you're best at, you're gonna win. If I'm more comfortable than my opponent, if my passes are connecting, if I'm controlling whether we go fast, we go slow, or somewhere in between, it's gonna be a good result for me. It's gotta be, because I have all the control. I've got the rhythm, I've got the flow. I'm dictating what happens and when it happens. Yeah, hell yeah, that's gonna be a great result. And there's no one way to do this. And that's why this category is a little bit more mixed up. I can do a whole video about controlling the game and working on your counter attack or working on additional possession play. I've never been demoted from Division One this year. You guys have watched me play live on the Twitch stream. So you've seen me happy and upset, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to be relegated uh, because I'm able to squeeze out Ws even when the game is not going in my favor, especially with all these patches this year from EA. There are so many times where I am just sitting back reflecting on this change and that change and how I don't agree with what they've done here and how this is a bad look for the better player, etc. But I'm still able to win a title or keep my position in Division 1 and that's all I want to see from you guys. Being able to squeeze the ugly W's, man! But if you guys enjoyed the content, man, drop a thumbs up. And do you want to see another video in the future talking about just win percentage and improving your results? Let me know. I got the social media icons up above and I appreciate you guys. Peace!